All right, so let's, we're still talking about areas. We're still using um, our fundamental theorem of calculus. All right, what I want to do is I want to find the area between the graph of f of x equals x squared minus 4 and the x-axis, what we've been doing all along here, from negative 2 to 2. All right, well, uh, my, my definition of area says this area is the definite integral from negative 2 to 2 of x squared minus 4 dx. Let's use our fundamental theorem here. This is x cubed over 3 minus 4x from negative 2 to 2. See, if I put 2 in here, this is 2 to the third over 3 minus 4 times 2 minus negative 2 to the third over 3 minus 4 times negative 2. See, this, this is the only downside to this fundamental theorem, right? So sometimes you get lots of fractions and lots of stuff going on, and it, it can turn into kind of a messy arithmetic problem, but... That's okay, we can do this. So let's see, this is 8 thirds minus 8 minus minus 8 thirds plus 8. All right, so let's keep going. This is 8 thirds minus 8 plus 8 thirds minus 8. Uh, let's combine the fractions, 16 thirds minus 16 now i need a common denominator so 16 is 48 thirds 16 minus 48 that's uh oh negative 32 thirds we've got a negative number yeah that's that's an issue right when we talk about area we're still we're still going back to the same geometry principles areas are always positive what happened Right? How did this come out this way? Well, look, if you graph this function, right, if you graph this function, it's, it's a parabola, it opens up, and um, its vertex is at 0, negative 4. And you can see pretty quickly, I, I, I picked the, y, the x-intercepts here. Its x-intercepts are 2 and negative 2. So if, whoa, we're going to have to do better than that. Um, if I sketch this, it comes up and through that point and up and through that point. And what area was I finding? I was finding this area here. Okay, so what happened? Think back. Think back. Whoops, I erased a little too much. Think back to our rectangles. Right, if I draw an approximating rectangle in here, what's the height of that rectangle? Well, I don't know, I wasn't super specific about the x value, but one thing I can tell you about the height of this rectangle is it's a negative number, right? Because f of x, whatever it is down here, is negative. So what, I, what, what, my, what my definite integral, if you go back to think about the Riemann sums was doing, is I added up a bunch of negative areas. So, yeah, it shouldn't come as a surprise that we ended up with a negative result. Right? And this is why, if you go back to, to, to a lot of all the examples and stuff we were talking about previously, we, we, I was often very meticulous about saying if f of x is positive, and this is why. I, I was dodging this case really, um, until, until we were ready to talk about it. And now, it, it's easy to fix, right? It's easy to fix. Just remember, areas are always positive. So all I'm going to do is take the absolute value of everything I've done here, right? absolute value, and I get my final answer, positive 32 thirds. So it's not a big deal, right? I mean, it's easy enough to fix. Um, you just have to be aware of it, or you have to be aware that this is potentially going to happen. Okay, so here, here's kind of the, the method that we're going to use, right, to, to deal with this situation. To find the area between the graph of a function and the x-axis, 
over an interval. Subdivide that interval into sections using the roots of f. Right, so the function is going to be positive on some of those subintervals, and it's going to be negative on other subintervals. Right, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to do each definite integral separately, and any one that comes out negative, I'm going to hit it with an absolute value, make a positive. Then I'm going to add them up and get my answer. Okay, so let, let's see how this works. Right, I want to find the area between the cosine of x and the x-axis from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, well, that's that's a full period of the cosine function, so you, you kind of know, right, it is going to be negative in there somewhere. All right, so let's think about what this looks like. And just, just to make this easy to see, um, I'm, I'm going to exaggerate the scale on the x-axis. I'm going to put uh, 0, 1 up here, right, and then let's see. Um, this is the cosine, so it's going to be 0 when it gets to pi, that's right about there. And then it's going to, um, not sorry, what am I saying? Um, it's going to be uh, 0 at pi over 2. It's going to be negative 1 at pi. Then it's going to come back up. And it's going to be over here at six pi, uh, uh, two pi, which is uh, about six and a quarter. One, two, three, four. Oops, last one, two, three, four, five. So about six and a quarter. That's what it's going to make it up to here, right? So the graph looks something like this, and I'm trying to find this area here, here. In here and you see where we, we do have a section where it's negative so I know at, at every you know approximating rectangle that I get from that section from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 is gonna give me a negative area I need to fix that right and here's how I'm gonna do it right I'm just gonna split this up the area is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the cosine of x, that's this section here, plus the integral from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 of the cosine of x. Oops, I left off the dx there, dx. That's going to be this area, we'll call that section 2 plus the integral from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi of the cosine of x dx. And that's going to be this third section here. We'll call that section 3. OK, now here, because I had that graph to look at, I already know that it's this middle section that's going to be negative. So this is the section I need the absolute value of. Sometimes you're not necessarily going to know that, and you don't really, I mean, you could pick a number on that interval, put it into the function, see if it's positive or negative. I don't usually bother. Usually I just split it up. I do the inter, I do the antiderivatives, right? I, I do the fundamental theorem. Then when I get to the end, I'm going to see some of the numbers are positive, some of them are negative. Now I know which ones I need to fix, and, and I kind of go back after the fact and put the absolute value in where, where I can see it needs to be. But we'll, we'll, we'll get an example of that in the next section, in the next slide. All right, now, so it's a bunch of integrals here, but the integral of the cosine of x is easy enough. This is the sine of x from 0 to pi over 2 plus the absolute value of the sine of x from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 plus the sine of x from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. All right, so let's put our numbers in. This is sine pi over 2 minus sine of 0 plus the absolute value sine 3 pi over 2 minus sine pi over 2 plus 
the sine of 2 pi minus the sine of 3 pi over 2. Okay, sine of pi over 2 is 1, sine of 0 is 0, plus absolute value. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 minus the sine of pi over 2, which is positive 1, plus sine of 2 pi is 0 minus sine of 3 pi over 2, that's negative 1. Okay, so this is 1 plus the absolute value of negative 2. And you see that, that definite integral did come out negative, right, like we expected it to do. Uh, so let's see, this is going to be plus 1 equals, so let's see, this is 1 plus 2 plus 1, which is 4. And there you go, that's my answer, right? There's the total area uh, between the cosine of x and the x-axis between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so let me give you one. All right, take a look at this, see what you come up with. Okay, so first, I have to find the roots of this thing, right? Because the roots are the, are the parts where it's potentially going to go from positive to negative. So let's see, I'm going to set x squared, uh, x cubed, minus x squared, minus 6x, equal to 0. And I'll factor out an x x times x squared minus x minus 6, and that's x times x minus 3 times x plus 2 equals 0. And so I get three numbers. I get x equals negative 2, 0, and 3. Notice two of those are my endpoints, right? which is nice. All right, so that's, that's telling me there's only one point in the middle of the interval. And that's the point that I really care about. Right? That's the point I'm going to use for my split. So what I'm going to say here is the area is the interval in, integral from negative 2 to 0 of x cubed minus x squared minus 6x dx plus the integral from 0 to 3 of x cubed minus x squared minus 6x dx. Now, I don't know yet which of these is going to be positive and which of these is going to be negative, and I don't care. I'm just going to let it ride the way it is. Then when I get to the very end, one of these is going to be a positive number, one is going to be a negative. The negative one I'm going to go back and give absolute value to. All right, so this is x to the fourth over 4 minus x cubed over 3 minus 6x squared over 2, which is minus 3x from negative 2 to 0, plus, and now look, when, when you're doing these, you're always, you're always finding the, the integral of the same function. So the antiderivative is going to be the same for every part. So this is just the same thing again. It's still x to the fourth over 4 minus x to the third over 3 minus 3x evaluated from 0 to 3. Let's put our numbers in. Uh, 0 to the 4th over 4 minus 0 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 0 minus, and group here, right? I'm going to do brackets. Um, minus 2 to the 4th over 4 minus minus 2 to the 3rd over 3 minus 3 times minus 2 plus, uh, let's see, 3 to the 4th th over 4, minus 3 to the 3rd over 3, minus 3 times 3, minus, and do you see that this next part is going to be 0, <laughs> right? When I put 0 into that polynomial, it comes out to 0. Okay, so, you know, the same thing happens here, right? This whole thing is 0. So this is going to be minus, what do I get here? Minus 2 to the 4th is 16, so that's 4 plus 8 thirds plus 6 plus 3 to the 4th, that's 81, so that's 81 fourths minus 27 thirds, that's 9 minus 9. Okay, now. 
I can see already this is positive, right? So when I put that negative sign in front, it's this piece here that's going to come out negative. So this is the part that needs the absolute value. And see, now I'll just go back, now that I know where it's supposed to go. Without having to do any work that I wasn't doing already, now I'll go back and fill them in. So let's see. This is the absolute value of minus uh, 10 plus 8 thirds plus 81 fourths minus 18. And we need some common denominators. So this is minus 30 thirds plus 8 thirds plus 81 fourths minus 72 fourths. This is, let's see, 38 thirds. It's minus 38 thirds, but the absolute value makes it positive. So it's positive 38 thirds plus 81 minus 72. That's 9. So that's 9 fourths. Now, yeah, look at that. That part did come out positive. Excellent. Exactly what we expected. Now, a uh, common denominator, that's going to be 12. So let's see, 38 times 4. 4 times 3 is 12 and 32, 152, 152 twelfths plus 27 twelfths. And there's my answer, 179 twelfths. Okay, a slightly bizarre number, but that's going to happen with these, especially when you have ones where you're working with polynomials. Right, they are sometimes going to come out to kind of wonky looking fractions. Remember, when you're doing these, I'm always going to be looking, your prof every professor I've ever met is always going to be looking for the exact answer. If you go and convert that to a decimal because you didn't want to dance with the fractions, you are almost certainly not going to get full credit. You definitely wouldn't get full credit with me. Um, and, and I'm just going to be honest with you, at this point in people's careers, you really should be okay with working with fractions. It's not, I mean, I mean it's, a, it's a little annoying, um, but it shouldn't be a real problem, right? So that's, so I'm always going for the exact answer, which in this case is going to be uh, 179 twelfths. Okay, so what's next? Um, we, we've got one more thing to go with this area, area of business. Um, we're going to look at how to find the area between two curves, All right? So, for example, if I have this curve and this curve, how can I find the area between the curves between two points, right? That's where we're going to go in the, in the next couple of lectures.